On Sunday afternoon, there were two random and unprovoked incidents where three females sustained deep slash wounds to their legs. The first incident occurred at approximately 4.20 p.m. at the 86th Street and Lexington Avenue train station. Both female victims, a 19-year-old and a 48-year-old, were in the vicinity of the four-train southbound platform when a male approached them and without any provocation slashed each of them one time to their legs. This male then walked onto a southbound four train and while on that train and only a few stops away and minutes later and again without any provocation he slashed another female who was sitting on that train, this time a 28 year old. Fortunately all the wounds sustained to the victims were non-life threatening. The male then exited the transit system and a manhunt for his identity and whereabouts began. During the early moments of this investigation, detectives were able to obtain video, again, from the MTA cameras in the subway system, and an image and video of a person of interest was obtained. This image was immediately forwarded to all NYPD personnel, and a manhunt for his whereabouts began. Additionally, a substantial and significant amount of extra NYPD officers was surged into the transit system to prevent future similar incidents from occurring, and to ensure the ridership that the NYPD was there for them. Fast forward to this morning, and again, focus on the same officers to my left, the same officers I just highlighted apprehended the murder suspect, Sergeant Clyde Jasmine, Police Officer Yvonne Nunez, Police Officer Bon Lee Wong, and Police Officer Jasmine Roman, accompanied by their commanding officer, Captain Billy Hout, all assigned to Transit District 4. These same officers were literally working around the clock to find this male, to end his threat, and to provide justice to the victims. And hard work and good police work pays off. This morning, at approximately 9.45 a.m., less than 48 hours since the slashings occurred, these officers, armed with the suspect's photo, observed him walking down an upper Manhattan street and apprehended him. This male, a 28-year-old, is currently in custody with detectives and he's being charged with three counts of assault in the first degree. I cannot understate how proud and impressed I am by the officers present with us. Simply put, phenomenal, great police work. Work with meaning and work with tremendous value. And work, to be quite frank, work that NYPD cops across all of New York City do each and every day. I'll now introduce the chair and CEO of the MTA, Mr. John Oliva. Thank you, Chief Kemper. And thank you to everybody at the Transit Bureau and these brave officers. We have an extraordinary partnership with the Transit Bureau and indeed with the entire police department uh, going all the way up to the police commissioner and including, of course, the amazing Detectives Bureau uh, led by uh, Chief Essek. Um, listen, the last few months we've been able to highlight the fact that uh, the subways have been getting dramatically safer. We've talked about how crime is down relative to 2022 and it's also down compared to pre-pandemic levels. But when High-profile incidents like these that Chief Kemper has described and which have been covered in the press take place, it's incredibly unnerving for riders. It doesn't feel good to hear about anyone getting hurt in this or attacked in the subway system, especially these kinds of random attacks. That's especially unnerving. And it's unacceptable. Nobody should feel afraid when going about their business in New York. As I always say, for New Yorkers, transit is like air and water. We need it to survive. It needs to be safe and it needs to feel safe. It is a great comfort to our riders and to everyone in the region to know that the, M the NYPD has subway riders' backs. Even in the last 24 hours, even as they're apprehending these suspects, the NYPD has surged hundreds of additional officers. I think the total is 1,000 extra officers in the, in the subway system compared to where we started last fall. That's, that's hundreds, uh, totaling 1,000 more officers on platforms, 
on trains and yes, in the mezzanines at the fare array where they actually caught one of these suspects. And I would add there was a fair, fair evasion even in the, the, the most recent apprehension. The guy apparently was fair evading on a bus. So fair evasion enforcement leads to apprehensions clearly and especially in this instance. The MTA and the NYPD have an extraordinary partnership. As Chief Kemper has highlighted, it is our cameras which again and again contribute to the incredible police work that gives us the results we're talking about today. Um, and I, as I've said many, many times, and I'm going to keep saying it, if you commit a crime or attack our riders on the MTA system, you're going to be caught on camera, and these guys at the NYPD are going to find you and put you in prison. We're seeing that every day with anybody who commits a crime. We're never going to stop working with the NYPD and working and to do everything to make our system safe and to make it feel safe. Thank you, Chief Kemper. Thank you, Police Commissioner. Thank you, Mayor Adams, for everything you're doing. Questions? Good afternoon. Um, for the homicide, the first uh, that man arrested, his name is Claude White. He lives at 801 Tilden Street. He's on parole for robbery from December of 20th to April of 24. He also has a bench warrant for drinking in public. He has eight prior arrests. Uh, grand larceny in 23, uh, assault and a robbery in 13, trespass in 12, fair evasion in 12, assault in 11, robbery in 10, discount in 9, and a fair evasion in 06. He also was arrested for and charged in this incident with a bank robbery that occurred on June 6th at a Bank of America at 345 Park. In that, he passed a note to the teller. The teller did not give him the money, but he turned around and grabbed a $100 bill from one of the customers. So he's also charged in that, as well as murder in the second degree for the transit homicide. Our perpetrator in the slashings, his name is Kemmel Rideout. He's a male 28 years old. He gives an address at 276 Country Road in North Norwich, New York. He has four prior arrests, none of which are in New York City. Uh, 2017 for forcible touching in Norwich, uh, 2016 for assault three again in Norwich, and 2012 for attempted rape in Varick, New York, and in 2011 cr criminal criminal mischief in uh, Riverhead, New York. Yeah. So uh, on the first homicide, we have a witness who says at 59th Street Station House, the two, the victim and the complainant uh, engage in a verbal dispute. As they pull into the 28th Street station, station, it becomes physical. A knife is pulled and at 23rd Street, we know uh, he's, he's uh, pronounced DOA. Uh, when we make the arrest, he does give statements. He says they are known to each other. He says it was a dispute over narcotics in which uh, his, the deceased had bought K2 and crack and he didn't pass it on to him. So that's what they were arguing about. We also, he also gave statements about where the weapon was and we recovered that weapon at the 23rd Street Station. It, it was, he, the, the, the perpetrator made statements about the dispute over drugs. It, it, it's it's on the between 28th and 23rd Street. Uh, the perpetrator is seen exiting at the 23rd Street station, and at 14th Street, that's where our victim is discovered. At the 23rd Street station, in the uh, the roadbed. Right now, that's unprovoked. They're completely unknown to each other, and uh, you know, unprovoked. No, he comes up. 
None. Just the two at 86th Street. The evasion? There were two fair evasions that he was arrested for. The, the, the homicide part. The second one I just gave you to four in uh, outside New York City. Yeah, so if, if I'm sure everyone in this room uh, rem if remembers last year uh, where we were, we were uh, spiking in crime in the transit system, and uh, the governor and uh, Mayor Adams uh, put a plan together, the Cops, Cameras, and Care program. And what that did was that infused um, hundreds and hundreds of cops, over a thousand cops, into the subway system. And due to the hard work and, and due to that investment, uh, we went from uh, a mid 40% increase in overall crime in the subway system uh, to, uh, we didn't only level it, we brought it down. You know, we, we're down in crime this year uh, versus last year, uh, uh, about a uh, little over 6%, 66 less victims of crime in the subway system this year versus last year. Um, I'd also like to say that when you compare uh, these crime numbers this year versus pre-pandemic, 2019 and earlier, uh, we're below pre-pandemic levels also 2019. Matter of fact, the crime numbers that we have this year are uh, some of the lowest crime numbers in recorded history. Uh, with that said, uh, with that said, what does it mean uh, to, uh, to these three victims, these four victims, right? So uh, between the investments uh, that were made, we stabilized crime. We, we, were, uh, we were very clear and upfront. The goal was to stabilize crime and stop the, uh, the increase. And we said we weren't going to be able to s sustain it. And we, we did that. The men and women of the NYPD accomplished that. Due to, due to these incidents, uh, we felt, and a decision was made, to infuse uh, more cops into the subway system. Uh, and that started over the weekend, and it continues to today. And I want to get this out to the, to the ridership, to the public. There are no immediate plans to reduce that infusion. We're, we're upwards of around 1,000 additional cops in the subway system each and every day started over the weekend and it will continue until further notice those cops are in uniform they're going to be assigned to different areas of the subway system focusing on trains on platforms and on mezzanines and at turnstiles and it'll be a mix between straight straight time and overtime resources i'd like to also say that um you know the hard work of cops uh, like the cops standing uh, to my left enforcement in the subway system is up dramatically this year versus years past dramatically. And what do I mean by that? I think this is important that the writers hear this, the work that's being done. We're up dramatically in arrests, 52.5% in arrests, overall arrests this year versus last year. Tab summonses, we're up 57%. C summonses, those are the summonses that writers uh, uh, relish. Those are the quality of life, uh, smoking, uh, disorderly conduct, up 64%. Fair evasion, fair, total fair evasion contacts or fair evasion arrests, we're up 143%. Fair evasion contacts up 56%. And when I say 56%, we're talking big numbers. We have over 22,000 more fair evasion contacts this year than yet last year. 22,000. And we're in month six. So weapons possession charges and arrests are up this year. What am I talking about with weapons? I'm talking about firearms. The bulk of them and a large percentage of them coming from people jumping in turnstiles and not paying their fare. Other weapons we're recovering is, uh, is knives. I saw an article in the press over the last few days highlighting that fact. So between the work of the men and women in the NYPD, the enforcement, um, you know, crime was stabilized. We, we, we're never going to be happy with any crime. We, we, we recognize that we have a lot of work to do. We realize that. No, no one misinterpret what I'm saying. We are not pounding our chest and waving the flag of victory. That is not what's happening here. But what we want to say, what the Chair Lieber mentioned was, a lot of investments, a lot of effort, and great police work has stabilized crime from where it was last year and years past, and we're going to continue this.
Dan, you got that? Just as far as mental health, we don't comment on somebody's mental history, but I'll let Chief Kemper answer the other. Well, I, I, I don't have a breakdown with me, stranger versus known, but I could talk about assaults in the transit system this year versus last year, we're down. And, and I don't know if I mentioned it also, we're down uh, uh, just about 4% year to date in, in felony assaults in the system. Um, we're, uh, um, when, you, when you look at the felony assaults also, and you know, by type, uh, we're talking about knife, uh, knife assaults here, 12.5% um, below this year versus last year in, in uh, felony assaults by knife. Again, uh, a lot of work still needs to be done. And, you know, I'm, I'm giving you facts and figures, and we are not naive, and we do not have our, have our heads in the sand. We recognize the work that's got to get done and continue to get done. But it's important that the public knows that the men and women in the NYPD are out there each and every day working very, very hard and smart for their safety. And, and again, it's about crime reduction. This is important. This is about crime reduction, and this is about people uh, going from point A to point B in that system without fear of becoming victim of a crime. All right? And that perception is real to so many. All right? And that's what we, we're, we're trying to combat. This overwhelming uniform presence in, in the subway system, this investment uh, is what we're doing to reduce that fear and that perception. Thank you.